Hey guys, some early morning encouragement. I have a special little word for you today. Want to come on, give you this message, play a little welcome music. All throughout my history. Good morning, good morning. I know I look crazy, it's the morning. I don't care. God says, come as you are. The winter storms made way Good morning. For spring. I have a really amazing message for you this morning. Very exciting. I usually I don't go stay. live on my personal Facebook. It's a new day, guys. Something new is happening. Let me know if the music is too loud. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Laura. Today I'm going to talk about something pretty awesome. Your house, your vessel, what are you attracting? God spoke to me so clearly today about um, how the contents of our home, the contents of our heart, the contents of our character attract things to us. Okay, I'm going to turn it down. Thank you, Jessica. See, Jessica ain't going to let me out here looking like a fool. Hey, April. You guys share this. Tag a friend. Um, I'm still figuring out all this social media stuff. Guys, I just want to love Jesus and talk about Jesus. The rest of this stuff to me is like, what do you mean I have to go live and I have to make a page and I have to make a group? Like, what are you talking about? I just want to love God and talk about him and make him accessible to the world. You guys, you know, like, God isn't this far away, distracting person. Hey, Aaron. Um, I hope you stay on. Today I'm going to talk about um, how your home, your vessel, your character, it attracts things to you. I had a pretty um, interesting encounter today um, with something in my home. And God started talking to me. And I was like, whoo, that's a whole message. It's actually a confirmation from a message that someone else that we all know had given earlier. Good morning, Emily. You guys share this. Tag some people. Um, hi, Sherry. Oh, hey, Todd. Hey, Jojo. So, um, it's really awesome. I woke up this morning, guys, and I saw a mouse in my house. It freaked me out. Um, I keep a pretty clean home. I keep a pretty tidy home. And God started talking to me. Um, and he said, the cracks, Echo, the cracks. Um, and I know Crystal, um, Crystal Clear, Crystal Brazel had put out a message um, like probably two or three days ago about her refrigerator and the cracks and how the cracks allowed everything to rot and go bad in her freezer. And God said, Girl, the home is clean, but you gotta you gotta get the cracks, the small holes, because things can creep through those holes. And if they creep through those holes, they can cause filth. And then he started speaking to me more and he said, You ever got in someone's car and it was filthy? I mean filthy McNasty. Can't get in, trash all over the floor. So you get in your car with your McDonald's bag and your trash. Um, and what do you automatically do? I mean, not automatically, because, you know, some of us think we're, like, nicer people, but you tend to just leave the trash there, because it's already filthy. So you're like, um, they don't care. It's a filthy place. So my trash belongs here, too. So, um, that's what I want to talk to you about. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Heather. Hi, Ryan. I hope this message sheds some light on your life and on your habits um, so that's what we're going to talk to, talk about today, okay? Um, so for those who missed it, I woke up this morning, I saw a mouse in my house. And my house is pretty clean. Um, I keep a pretty clean house. Um, you know, things are not left out. Dishes are done. Counters are washed. Trash is not, you know, anywhere. And I was like, where did this mouse come from? I was like, whoa, there's a mouse in my house. And God started talking to me about our homes and um, our vessels and what we attract. And, you know, filling the cracks. 
and making sure that things can't get into the cracks, into those spaces. Because I was on the phone with my friend and she said, girl, I hate mice. They find the smallest little holes to squeeze through. That is the way sin is. Man, he says, guard your hearts. He said, wake up and put on the full armor of God every day and the breastplate of righteousness to, to make sure we have no cracks in our armor. Because when we have cracks in our armor, sin can creep in. Those lustful thoughts can creep in. Those bad habits can creep in. Those bad conversations can creep in. So he said, God said, Echo, I want you to pay attention to the cracks. And I was like, okay, God. So I've been praying. I've been in prayer. I've been talking to God. You know, show me the cracks. Show me the things that I need to fix because I don't want any small thing creeping through my cracks. Because here's the thing about a mouse, right? Mouse can be big. And the way that they can contort their body, they can fit, like I can have, there can be a mouse this big and it can fit through a hole this big. Just shrink its body, do all this stuff and just squeeze through. That's the way sin is, right? It finds a crack and it takes this big sin, right? Fornication, pornography, um, sexual perversion, um, you know, alcohol addiction, drug use, stealing, lying, manipulation. And it says, hmm, I found this little hole. I'm going to take this big sin and squeeze it through this little hole. And then that big sin, which you weren't even paying attention to, wasn't even on your radar, finds this little crack to, to slip through. And it slips through. But when it slips through, it's not small, it's big. You know? The mouse comes out, it's big, and it slips through the small hole, small hole, but when it comes out the hole, it's still the mouse. It's still the big. And he said, think about it if your house was filthy, if your house was dirty, it would attract filth. It would attract dirtiness. And sin is filth, right? And you're in someone's home. You ever gone to a friend's house and you're like, eh? I'm not going back to that person's house because that person's house is nasty and I don't want to be there. Now, I find that nasty people have no problem being in nasty people's houses because it feels comfortable, right? Um, and a lot of the times we're out with friends, we're doing things, we're hanging out with people who, who, who share the same sin, right? We're going out and we're looking for boys. Same sin, feels comfortable, right? We're going out and we're going to that club and we're getting drunk and we're, you know, doing our thing and, you know, you don't mind hanging out with that person because you're doing the same thing, right? You go to that person's house and you guys are doing drugs. Go to that person's house and you're drinking alcohol because what you are and what you do attracts things, right? But imagine when you finally clean up your house and you go to that friend's dirty house, you're like, girl, your house is nasty, right? But if you're a good friend, let me help you clean it up, right? Or like your car is just so nasty and finally God cleans it up. You clean it up. And you're in your other friend's car, you get in their car and their car is nasty and you're, you start saying, girl, we gotta clean up this nasty car. This ain't right. I don't like riding around in this nasty car because when you clean up your home, when you clean up your vessel, you're no longer comfortable in sin, right? And then you look at your friend and you say, um, let me help you clean up this car. Let's, let's go to that car spot, girl. Let's, let's get a trash bag. Let's vacuum this out because you're no longer comfortable in those same places. So that's what God was talking to me about. Because he was saying, even, even when you are good and your vessel is clean and your character and your morals are clean, sin is always looking for the cracks to creep in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clean your car, girl, right? But, um, but when your home isn't good, watch out because you're going to attract all the filth, all the sin, all the dirtiness. Guys, when I used to smoke weed, 
I used to hang out with every weed smoker. When I used to go clubbing, I used to attract all the clubbing girls. Um, you know, like that's just how it is. Um, and now I don't do those things anymore. Guess what? 95% of those people are no longer in my life. Because we were never really friends in the first place. We were comfortable in the same sin. My sin was attracting their sin, and then we were sinning together. But as soon as I got clean, boops, up, I got to clean up my vessel. I got to clean up my home. I got to clean up my heart. I got to clean up my walk. I got to clean up my ways. As soon as I got clean, that sin didn't want to be around me anymore. They were like, hmm, I can't hang out with her. We got nothing in common. Right? Because I got clean. But, but, the ones who would listen, I said, girl, come on and get clean with me. You know what I'm saying? How did you do that? Most of the time they say, girl, I've known you and you've always been dirty. But how did you get clean? They walk into your house and your house is used to being filthy and they walk in your house and your house is so clean. They're like, girl, I'm so proud of you. Man, I need to be more like you. And then you tell them about your Jesus. You tell them about your God. You tell them, I, I, I was this way, but God. Yeah, sure, I was filthy. Sure, I was in sin. Sure, I was out there clubbing and drinking. Sure, I was out there weed smoking. And the ones who aren't for you, they're going to fall off because that sin is no longer attracted. So your, your clean vessel is no longer attracting dirty things. But there's going to be some, some dirty things that say, how can I get clean? Like with Paul and Silas, guys, in the prison. Paul and Silas singing in the prison. They're in the depths and darks of the prison and they start singing so loudly in their darkest moment of their life that the prison foundation, the very prison foundation shakes. And that which they were bound to, guys, this is a double word, that which they were bound to and that which the prisoners were bound to was loosed. It was loosened. Guys, they were set free from the chains that were holding them. And the bondage that was holding them by somebody else's praise and glorification of the Lord. Now, if that's not a whole word, guys, the prison guard comes in and he's about to kill himself. He's like, oh, my God, all these prisoners are about to break free. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to kill myself. Paul and Silas are like, whoa, 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 turn on the lights. We're all still here. No need to do that. And the prison God was so in awe of what just happened. He fell to his knees and he said, what must I do to be saved? I need to know the God that you serve. In our process, guys, it might shock you, but it's not shocking God. Sometimes he lets you stay in your sin. But when he's ready to take you out, I promise you, people are watching. And when you clean your vessel, when you clean your home, when you clean your car, when you clean up, when you start taking care of your body, people are going to cause to wonder, what's the change? Some of the people are going to go, oh, too bougie. Not, oh, I can't hang out with her anymore. She thinks she's too good for us. Oh. I can't hang out with him anymore because they're going to be judging me. Oh, I can't. You know, there are people who will separate from you. I'm sorry. I hate to tell you that. When you clean yourself up, people will step about, separate from you. However, there are people who will hang around you and say, I need to know more about this thing that got you clean. Girl, teach me how to clean my home. Teach me how to be more organized. Girl, I need to do better in my car. Can you kind of, what did you do? What are you doing every day to make sure you know, your car is clean. They're going to start asking you questions. They're going to start getting curious. They're going to want to be like you. And then that's your moment. That is your opportunity to tell them about the God who cleaned you up. Hi, Emily. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Eva. Eva, I love you. I'm praying for you. So, but yeah, you guys. So, hi, Peggy. You guys, all of this happened because I woke up and I saw a mouse in my clean house. I was like, what in the world? The blood of Jesus. I said, why is this mouse in my house? My house is a clean house. 
And Jesus said, sin and filth and dirtiness will find a crack and it will push its way through. He said, Echo, find the crack it came from and fill it. Find the crack it came from and put a stop to it. I said, Woo, Jesus, that's a whole word. That is a whole word. So today I'm going to go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, going to get some of that whatever mesh. There's a little crack in my wall near my heater. I know where it came from. Here's the thing How often do we know where the crack in our armor is? But we're like, huh. I kind of like it or uh, I see it, but I don't think it's a big problem, right? You guys, I know where the hole is. I know where the crack is. I've always known where it is. I never thought it was going to be a big problem until I saw a freaking mouse in my house. And now it's a big problem. But you know what God said? Heck, I showed you the crack. I showed you the hole in the wall near the heater. You know, I showed it to you. You knew it was there. And now you don't want to take care of it until the dirty thing has slipped its way in. Woo! That's a whole word. Guys, examine your heart. Examine your walk. Examine your armor. Look at the cracks in your armor today because if you're ignoring them, I promise you, like that mouse that big mouse found that little hole to squeeze through. Sin's going to find its way to squeeze in. And then it's kind of kind of going to become a big issue when God said, girl, I already showed you it. You just ignored it because it wasn't a problem. God says, I want to help you before it becomes a problem. And furthermore, if your house is dirty, if you got mice, if you got cockroaches, if you got ants, if you got bugs, your car is nasty, your heart is filthy, you're a gossiper, you're a liar, you're a spirit of division, you're a cheater, okay, you're, you're a fornicator, you're, you're out there doing this, that, and the other, God says, okay, you're attracting more filth to you. You're attracting more things to you that are just like that. However, I want to clean you up. I want to clean you up. And when I clean you up, don't be surprised when all these dirty things, when all this sin, when all this filth, when all when you stop gossiping, I bet the same people don't call you anymore. You can't call me to gossip. You know why? I don't want to hear it. And I'm going to say, usually when we start talking and the topic of a person comes up, my alert goes off and I say, we have to be careful what we're discussing and how we're discussing it because I don't want to be a part of gossip. Um, and it's not like God to tear somebody down. You know what I mean? There's a difference between talking about something that happened to you and processing it in a safe place with a friend, but that can easily move to slander or to gossip. You know what I mean? If I'm your friend and I love you, yes, I want to hear about your problems. Yes. I want to hear about your heart. If I'm not your friend and you're just calling me and all of a sudden you start about someone else, I don't want to hear it. I am not your safe place. I am not your dumping ground. I am not that person. I'm not. A matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to tell you, girl, I, I don't even have time to talk about this person. I don't even want to hear about this person. You know what I mean? Not my circus, not my monkeys, right? So I'm telling you, when you stop smoking weed, you're going to find a lot of people that you were smoking weed with are no longer your friends. And they're going to call it you being better than them. You being judgmental. Here's the thing, guys. I smoked weed for half of my entire life. Um, listen, the devil can't come for me because I will tell it. The devil is the accuser of man. Okay? You can't accuse me because there's no shame in my game. I'm going to tell the world before you try to tell the world about who I was. Because after you get finished telling the world who I was, I'm going to say, I already said that. And after I told them who I was, I showed them who I am. 
in the name of Jesus, okay? Listen, don't come for me unless I call you. Um, I'm so serious about this Jesus business. I'm so serious. God is walking with me. I will tell you about my weed addiction. I'll tell you about the the fastness and the dressing in a certain way and the thinking I was only valuable for sex or thinking I was only valuable for a body, using my charm and my, manipul my manipulation to try to get my way, to try to get what I wanted. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you about the molestations. I'll tell you about the rapes. I'll tell you about my divorce. I'll tell you all about it. I will take accountability for me and my problems. You guys, let me tell you something. I've never said this out loud before. I'm going to say it today. My ex-husband's friends used to call me the warden. The warden. Sometimes we're busy crying. Oh my God, I got divorced and he doesn't love me. And he was mean and abusive to me. And it, nothing was great. And then God starts showing you, but um, you were controlling. You didn't love yourself. You needed constant attention to be validated. Um, you wanted things when you wanted them and you wanted them at that moment and you wanted them your way. And in response to not getting a response, you became angry and toxic. I will tell on myself. I will tell on myself. So the devil can not tell on me. And matter of fact, I will tell on myself because a lot of you are scared to tell the truth. So hopefully my truth will help you walk in your truth and set you free in the name of Jesus. Guys, we're walking in a shame-free, set-free ministry. How can you get set free if you're still lying? How can you get set free if you're still believing the lies you told yourself to make you feel good? I don't know about you. I don't want to feel good in my lies. I want to feel good in my truth. I want to actually be able to get it right the next time. I do. So if I do get married again... If things do work out with somebody else, I know where I went wrong. I know how I went wrong. And I know that God cleaned it up and God can fix it. Emily, I see you laughing at me. Yeah, that's right. They called me the warden. But, you know, there's also a four-year difference. But there we go. That, that's, that's me making an excuse. Be accountable. Be accountable for your stuff. So, if you're in sin, expect more sin to follow you. Filth attracts filth. Dirt attracts dirt, right? Have you ever been vacuuming, guys, and your vacuum gets so full of dirt, it stops working? This is a whole word. Pay attention. I was vacuuming. I have a cat. My cat has a lot of hair, so I vacuum often. Vacuuming just a normal floor, nothing crazy, and all of a sudden, my vacuum starts work, stops working. And you know what I did? I blamed the person who was vacuuming. What did you do to my vacuum? There's nothing wrong with my vacuum. Matter of fact, I'm looking at the thing and there's, it's not, there's not even a lot of dirt in there. You couldn't see the dirt in the canister because there wasn't a lot of dirt, right? And then I'm trying to take this thing apart thinking, why is it falling apart? Why did it stop operating? Ooh, this is a whole word, guys. Where it was broken was internally where I could not see. The entire hose had become full of these little cat hair clumps from vacuuming over all this time. I couldn't see it. It didn't, it didn't look full in the canister. But on the inside, it was full of filth and dirt. And it stopped operating. That's a whole word. You guys, we're trying so hard to clean up the dirt. We're vacuuming it up. We're cleaning it. But are we ever dealing with the issue? Are we ever dealing with the filthy mind, the filthy mouth, the filthy ways, the grimy intentions, the gossiping mouth, the lustful spirit, the perversion, the lying, the manipulation? We put a band-aid over it. We clean it up. But do we ever get rid of it? We got to stop trying to gloss over our filth and truly get to the bottom of it. 
So it's not going to break us down at a random moment in time when we're walking and we think everything's good because we don't see the problem. And then all of a sudden it's a breakdown. All of a sudden everything starts to crash. That's our internal. God said, check your heart. Be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds and guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. So many of us are trying to talk a perfect talk, but our heart is nasty, right? You guys, you can wear your skirt all the way down to the floor, but your heart can be nasty. You can walk around every day saying, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Blessed and highly favored daughter of the most high king living in his glory. Yes, Lord. And your walk can still be nasty. We have to stop portraying to the world one thing, knowing our heart is another thing. Portraying to the world one thing, knowing our walk is another thing. Oh my God, Sean Smith. You guys, Sean Smith Sr., follow him. He's a whole beast for the Lord. I was on his midday live um, or a dream interpretation. But either way, he said, your lifestyle is more of a testimony than your words could ever be. We're out here trying to preach, trying to tell everyone about God, right? And the words sound good and we know the Bible, but in the meantime, we're, we're faker than a $3 bill. If that's you today, fix it, fix it. It's easy, it's easy. Walk it like I talk it. Right? I don't even listen to that music anymore, but I'm pretty sure it's walk it like I talk it. Right? That's what God wants. That's what God wants. He wants our walk, our heart, our ways, and our thoughts to all line up. So all of that, all of that the Holy Spirit gave to me out of seeing a mouse in what I really thought was a very clean house. So God is telling me today, Echo, find the cracks in your armor because you know where they are. I've showed them to you. And fill them up. Stop them from being exposed. Do not allow any dirt or filth to get through those cracks. You think that it's just a small crack and it's not gonna affect you until that big filthy sin squeezes its way through and shows up in your house and then you're scared and then you're like oh my god what is this what happened why is this here in my home why is this here in my life because you never you never did what you needed to do oh my gosh yes william being cleaned and being washed in the blood are two different things so um we gotta we just gotta check ourselves check our armor right Wake up every day and put on the full armor of God and the breastplate of righteousness. Every day I try to pray, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So I hope this message blessed you guys. Go like my page, A Word From Echo. Um, I have a personal, private women's group, also A Word From Echo. My t-shirt ministry launched in its official capacity yesterday. Um, my t-shirts are positive messaging for women um, who are who just no more shame no more shame over the the molestations and the rapes and the sexual traumas and the sexual experiences we had and those um, emotionally and verbally and, and physically abusive relationships we were in or those divorces we went through no more shame no more shame the shirts are beautiful shame free set free you can you will you must surrender Healing hurts, it's okay. Forgive yourself and beauty for ashes. Go to www.awordfromecho.com. When you support me, you are supporting an entire movement. Um, a dollar or two per every order gets donated to a nonprofit foundation, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Um, Crystal Basil and Carlo Yarborough founded it. It's amazing. Together, we're changing the world. We're changing women. I'm going to start 
speaking in organizations around the city, speaking at colleges, going to churches and speaking this message, this ministry, this shame free, set free, surrender, empower, restore, renew ministry that God gave me. Man, I'm going to I'm going to speak it until I can't speak it anymore. Because God said, Echo, it's not my ministry. It's not your ministry. It's my ministry. And it's not your words. It's my words. So I pray that God continue to speak through me. I pray that these messages um, touched you. Share my message. Like my page. Go to my website. Um, you're not just buying a t-shirt. I'm not in a business. I'm in a ministry. And I have a mission to change the world one woman and one t-shirt at a time. I hope you've enjoyed this word. Um, it was a spontaneous word that God gave to me um, and I hope it touched your heart. Bye, talk to you later.